Every day, more than 200,000 people pass through two aging train tunnels on the Hudson River. They were built in 1910, battered by Hurricane Sandy in 2012, and still carry America's busiest rail line. These tunnels are over a century old, soaked with salt water and cracking under pressure. If even one tube fails, service could collapse from 24 frames an hour down to just six, paralyzing travel across the entire Northeast Corridor. That's why a $30 billion rescue is now underway. This is the barge, one of the work areas created in the Hudson River, where they're working to build the Gateway Tunnel. The Hudson Tunnel Project. Two brand new tubes will be bored deep beneath the river, while the original tunnels are rebuilt for another century of service. It's one of the most ambitious rail projects in U.S. history. But with rising costs, long timelines, and fragile infrastructure, the stakes couldn't be higher. Will America finish before the old tunnels fail? The bottom of the Hudson River is a sort of chocolate pudding consistency, and the tunnel, it would collapse on top of the tunnel if we didn't stabilize. To see why this new tunnel is so important, we have to travel back in time. In 1910, the Pennsylvania Railroad opened the North River Tunnels. Back then, it was seen as a wonder of its time, dug by hand through mud and rock, and for the first time linking New Jersey straight into a brand new Penn Station in Manhattan. Imagine the change. Passengers no longer had to step off onto ferries. They could ride right into the heart of New York. People even compared it to the Panama Canal in size and boldness. But nothing lasts forever. For more than a century, these twin tubes, each with a single track, have carried more and more trains. Today, they are the only rail path between New Jersey and New York City. One track in, one track out, with no backup. At rush hour, 24 trains squeeze through every single hour. That's the most the tunnels can handle. And what happens if one breaks down inside? Chaos spreads across the entire Northeast Corridor, the 457-mile rail line from Boston to Washington. And then came the storm. In October 2012, Superstorm Sandy slammed into the coast. 13 million gallons of seawater flooded into the North River tunnels. Crews pumped it out and trains got moving again. But the salt water had left scars that no one could ignore. It seeped into the concrete, corroded steel, and ate at the electrical systems. Even today, chloride deposits wake up with each new leak, reactivating the damage. Power cables, signal systems, and tracks inside continue to fail. And the result? Trains are being delayed almost two out of every three days. The stakes could not be higher. This corridor isn't just about local commuters. It fuels the nation's economy. The New York region alone makes up 10% of America's GDP, while the entire Northeast Corridor accounts for nearly 20%. So what happens if the tunnels shut down? It wouldn't just hurt commuters. It would shake the flow of business, finance, and goods that spread across the whole country. Attempts to fix the problem aren't new. Back in the 1990s, planners launched the ARC project, access to the region's core. The goal was simple, build new tunnels under the Hudson. But after 15 years of study, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie canceled it in 2010, calling it too expensive. Christie is expected to announce Wednesday that the project is dead. The Republican governor angered lawmakers on both sides of the Hudson River and in Washington earlier this month. The dream was shelved, and the old tunnels were left to limp along. Then Amtrak stepped in. After Sandy showed just how fragile the system had become, the railroad offered a new plan, the Gateway Program. Unlike ARC, this vision was bigger. It would add new tunnels, yes, but it would also rebuild the whole approach into New York with new bridges, tracks, and Penn Station upgrades. And at the heart of it all, the Hudson Tunnel Project. Two brand new tubes under the river, built strong enough for the next hundred years. Once they're done, trains will shift into them, and the original 1910 tunnels can finally close for a full repair. It's a project born of urgency. Without it, one accident, one breakdown, one collapse inside the old tunnels could bring the region to its knees. And that's why construction has already begun, from the shores of New Jersey to the streets of Manhattan. But what exactly will be built? And how do engineers carve out a brand new highway for trains beneath a river already packed with concrete and steel? The Hudson Tunnel Project is a feat of modern engineering. At its core are two brand new tubes, each with one track running about 4.5 miles beneath the Hudson River. 
Together, they will add nine miles of new rail lines, linking Secaucus, New Jersey to Penn Station, New York. So where does the journey begin? In North Bergen, New Jersey, where crews are building a new portal. From here, at the edge of the Palisades, giant tunnel boring machines will launch in 2026. These TBMs, massive 1,600-ton steel giants, will grind through earth and bedrock, carving perfect 28-foot-wide circles beneath the riverbed. And every 750 feet, cross passages will connect the tubes, safety lines in case of emergencies. Before these machines can even move forward, engineers face another challenge, stabilizing the ground under the Hudson. The river bottom is soft, filled with silts and sands. What if the ground collapsed? To prevent that, crews are mixing soil, water, and concrete into a dense, frozen-like mass. Only then can the TBMs safely chew their way toward Manhattan. And what happens on the New York side? That's where the challenge gets even bigger. The tunnel has to surface in one of the busiest and most crowded places in the world. At Hudson Yards, where towers and skyscrapers stretch high above, engineers already built a concrete tunnel box to preserve the future path. Without this, new foundations could have blocked the way forever. The scale of this work is staggering. The new tunnels will dive as deep as 275 feet under the Palisades before leveling out beneath the river and rising again under Manhattan. Each tube will stretch about 2.4 miles under the water alone. The inside diameter will be just over 25 feet, enough to fit tracks, signals, power systems, and emergency walkways. But how safe will they be? Safety rules today are far stricter than in 1910. Fireproof doors, ventilation shafts, and fan plants on both sides of the river will keep air moving and give people a way out. Electrification will be modernized, and every system will be hardened against flooding. After Sandy, nothing else will do. Yet the Hudson Tunnel is only one piece of something bigger. It connects to the Gateway Program, which also includes replacing the old portal bridge over the Hackensack River, expanding through the Meadowlands, and making changes at Penn Station. The new tunnels will double the tubes under the Hudson. But here's the catch. Train capacity won't increase right away. Why? Because Penn Station itself must also be expanded or redesigned. For now, the new tunnels give something just as important. Redundancy a backup that has never existed before. Construction is already underway. In North Bergen, work on the Tunnel Avenue Bridge began in late 2023, clearing the path for the launch of the tunnel boring machine. Over in Manhattan, casing work at Hudson Yards picked up again, making sure the tunnel line stays protected. Step by step, contracts for Palisades tunneling, river stabilization, and Manhattan excavation are being rolled out. And by 2027, engineers will even freeze the ground to make digging safer. But how long will all of this actually take? The timeline is a long one. The new tunnels are expected to open by 2035. Only then can the old North River tunnels be closed, one tube at a time, for three years of heavy repairs. Crews will strip away salt-damaged concrete, replace corroded steel and electrical cables, and rebuild the bench walls and tracks. And by 2038, all four tubes, the new and the old, will be working together. At last, the rail system will have the backup and strength it has always needed. But here's the big question. What does it all cost? The tunnel work alone is over $16 billion, and when tied to the wider Gateway program, the total comes close to $30 billion. That's a massive price tag. Still, the returns are huge. The project is set to pump nearly $19.6 billion into the economy and create more than 70,000 jobs during construction. At its peak, over $80 million each month will go into wages, steel, and concrete. Parts are being built in factories across America thanks to Buy America rules. Even local shops and restaurants near the work sites are already feeling the ripple effects. Still, the question remains. Why spend decades and billions on a tunnel hidden beneath the river? The answer is simple, reliability. Without it, closing just one tube would cut train service by 75%, pushing hundreds of thousands of riders onto crowded roads and buses. Trains are already delayed almost every day, and the Hudson Tunnel promises to finally break that cycle. But here's the truth. It's more than a tunnel. It's a lifeline. The real question is this, will it be ready before the old tunnels give out? Beneath the Hudson, the race is on. 
between crumbling tunnels built in 1910 and a $30 billion lifeline for America's busiest rail line. When the new tubes finally open, they could protect the Northeast Corridor for the next century. But will it all happen before the old tunnels fail? What do you think? Can America finish in time? Share your thoughts below, and don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications for more.